All right, starting out in a blank scene here, I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, click the middle mouse button to look around. Shift, uh, click middle mouse button to pan around. Let's click 3D scene here. Double click, rename it to world. Control S, save. That's our scene, our main world scene. Let's do Control A again, or you can press that plus sign. Let's add another node 3D, rename that environment. Now Control A, mesh instance 3D. Let's make a plane uh, geometry material override standard material 3D. Click that. Albedo, change the color. Um, let's do, I don't know, some like dark red or something. And we can rename that to ground. And I don't need physics on it because this is gonna be essentially a 2D game. And I don't need physics on that because this will be essentially a 2D game. Then Control A again, another mesh instance. Let's do a box. This time we'll do create tri-mesh static body geometry and give it, a, I don't know, blue color or something. So now it has physics. You can see there's a static body 3D and a collision shape on it. So zoom out, I'll hit R, switch to scale mode. These are all your different modes up here. Um, so I'll just scale this up to give us a big floor. And this one I'll rename to block. If I hit F, I can sort of focus on it if I'm over there. W, switch back to movement mode and I can move it up maybe. But I'm gonna hit R, scale it up, maybe scale it out a little, and move it over there, Control D to duplicate, bring it around, I don't know, make a few blocks. Now we want our set up our lighting and stuff. So what you see here, this lighting and shadows and stuff, this is just like kind of default editor view. If I actually run the game, I hit Control A, let's add in a camera 3D here and move it back. I can hit preview. You can see there's lighting, but if I actually run this, hit F5, uh, we need to define a main scene. So click select current. If you run it, you can see there's no, not actually any lighting. This is just default editor view. So we want to add an environment. So just add world environment, click new environment here. You can change settings in here, like background color, whatever you want, um, stuff like that. I don't care. I'm just going to add in a control A directional light 3D. So I can bring this up hit E, rotate, maybe rotate it around here. You can hit T to toggle between local and global um, transform, by the way. Click shadows, enable those. Now we have shadows and lighting, looks good. Okay, now if we just test that, you can see that there is lighting in our scene, it looks good. Let's delete that camera. Now let's uh, click to create a new tab. We'll click other node, type in character body 3D. So this is, we're gonna use for characters that are have physics and interact with the physical environment. Rename this to player, click node, groups, type in player, add that. So now it's in the player group. We can save the scene also here. Go back to the inspector, control A, let's add a collision shape and give you a capsule shape. Hit W, control, drag, that'll snap if you do control, drag. So bring it up. Um, now we need a few elements here. So we want a Raycast 3D. This will be for the gun. I'll bring it up. I'll set the target position to zero um, and set the Z to be negative 1000. And I bring it up to 1.5 on the position. So you can see it's pointing really far that way. We also want a camera 3D move it also to 1.5. So now this is kind of our guns pointing the same direction as our camera from the center of the camera. So now we have all this, uh, let's just do our UI. So I'll do control A at a canvas layer. So canvas layers are typically where you want to show UI. Um, and we'll do control A, add in a control. So control nodes are used for UI. Um, I'm going to call this gun base. And if I click here, I can set the anchoring. I'm going to do this one at center bottom. And we're going to do control A and add in an animated sprite 2D. So now let's go ahead and add in our um, assets. So I'm just going to drag these into the scene. Um, and there you go, they're in. Um, so under animated sprite, let's do animation, new sprite frames. Go to animation, uh, not animation, click that. There we go. Brought up the sprite frames editor. So let's call this one. Uh, idle, set this to be play on awake. We click this little grid thingy here, choose the gun sprites, horizontal one, vertical, I mean, horizontal four, vertical one, select the first frame. If I uh, control scroll wheel, I can zoom out. So select that, add one frame. That is our idle animation there. And so you'll notice this is uh, a blue, uh, this has a blue icon here. So typically red is 3D, green is UI and blue is 2D, but you can render 2D inside of the UI by just making it a child of a UI node, right? Um, so 
Um, I also want to, uh, if I have Q, that brings me in select mode. I can drag this while holding shift or alt shift and that yeah it makes it centered keeps it centered so in this case uh, w will just bring it up i kind of want it to be at the bottom i'm going to hold uh shift bring it down like this and w bring it over a little bit so that gives me my gun uh and puts my gun in a good position at the bottom of the screen and let's do one more animation i'll call this shoot and again click that gun sprites bring the vertical to one and I'll click this, 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 and then this, so it ends on this one. You can see the number, uh, which frame it'll be, add four frames. If I play that, you can see it's playing the animation. I don't want it to loop, I want it to be a little faster also, so let's bring that up to 10. Bam, that looks cool. All right, so that is our gun animation there. Let's also add in uh, a color rectangle and center that, make it really small, just Alt-Shift, and then make the color uh, more transparent and I'll call this a crosshair. There we go, okay, and now I wanna add in uh, one more UI thing. I'm gonna do control, I'll call this death screen. Let's make this cover the whole screen and then I will add a panel and uh, let's center you and shift alt bring that up alt bring that there and uh, let's add in a label and i'll say you died we can center that and bring that up and then also a button that says restart center bring it down there we go and let's just hide that. One more thing, let's do control A and let's add an audio stream player, just a regular one with no uh, spatial anything. It's just gonna play at the same volume no matter where it is. It has no transform at all. And we're gonna add on our revolver shot here. And let's click audio down here, add a new bus. I'll call this sound effects. So that way um, over here, I'll name this to shoot sound and over here on the bus it'll play the sound effects bus so that means it goes through the sound effects bus which then plays through master volume so if i want to have some setting that changes um, just the volume of sound effects i would only change the sound effects bus volume um, okay so now finally let's go in we're going to add a script here so just click that click create this gives us a script template uh, we're not going to use most of this we also need to have input and um yeah, we'll, we'll start with input here. So I'll do move forwards, move backwards, move left, that's a typo, that's all right. Exit, restart, and shoot. If you make a typo, you can just click the name, change it. There we go, um, add a plus sign, and then you just hit whatever input you want. So move forwards, I'll hit W, click OK. Backwards, S. Left, OK, uh, right, D. Exit will be escape, restart, let's do R, and shoot, I'll just click uh, mouse button, left mouse button, okay. There we go, we have our input. Also under project settings, I wanna set up our physics layers. So we go down to layer names, 3D physics, let's name layer one to environment, and layer two to characters. Um, and on our player over here in inspector, collision, put you on layer two, so if you click the dots, it'll show um, what it only show the named layers, but you can also hover and see what they are. So environment is going to be there, value one, layer zero, and we want mass to be both of them. So the way it works, uh, collision in Godot is typically when you have something that's a physical object, you set it to be on the layer you want it to be on, and then you set the mask to determine what it can collide with. So in this case, I'm on the characters layer and I want to be able to collide with both the environment and other players or under other characters. So now in our code here, um, let's get rid of all this jump code and let's get rid of all, yeah, all of that. We don't need that. Now we need all of our references. So let's get a reference to the animated sprite. Let's get a reference to our Raycast 3D and let's get a reference to our shoot sound. Also on our Raycast 3D, we need to set the collision. So right now it's masked to just environment. We want it to be able to hit characters as well. And we don't want it to hit the player, so we don't check hit from inside. 
colliding with just bodies, areas, or something else we don't need to worry about, and make sure that it, it is enabled. Also, it's excluding the parent, so it's not going to hit it anyways. Okay, so now we have our speed already defined. Let's do constant uh, mouse sensitivity, let's say 0 0.5. So we can set up that, um, and let's finally do var can shoot, uh, let's true, so this will determine if we can shoot our gun, and var dead, which is false, we are not dead. Um, then we'll have function ready. This is called um, basically when the game starts or when this node is added to the scene, if we instantiated it. And um, this is just a default method. We're also gonna have function uh, input. So this is called whenever any input event happens and it passes in that input event. So I press a button, I move the mouse, whatever, joystick, whatever, physics process, uh, which was already here. That's like fixed update from Unity and it's just called 60 times a frame, no matter how fast or slow your computer is, um, or not, uh, 60 times a second, sorry. We also have a uh, process, which is called every frame, um, and it changes based on how fast your computer is, right? And pass is just kind of like a junk uh, line, so uh, it doesn't do anything, but if I take it out, it's then the editor sees, oh, there's a blank method, so there's a syntax error. So I just like to put that there because I don't like seeing syntax errors when I'm talking. Um, so we have, um, these are all our base stuff. So we're gonna have some generic input in here. Um, let's start with mouse input. So first off, if we're dead, we should not be able to turn. So we're gonna say, if dead return. Otherwise, if our input event is a input event mouse motion. Um, so if I control click on this, I can see what it is. And we can see here, there is a 2D uh, vector called relative. If I click on that, it shows, oh, it's a position relative to the previous position. So if I move the mouse, it gets how much I moved, right? So I can get the event.relative.x, multiply it dot mouse sensitivity. So this is if I move my mouse left or right, we can do rotation degrees dot y minus equals that. So that'll make us turn left or right. Then um, under process, let's put some input if input dot is action just pressed or not yeah just pressed exit we want to exit the game so we'll do get tree dot quit and that'll close the game and then for uh let's see restart we want to restart the game i'm going to put that in a separate method because i'm going to be able i want that to be called from the death as well so we'll just put that over here or from the death uh, screen button so there's that, and then finally, um, if we're dead, return. So this will be kind of our in-game input. This is like, I don't care if I'm dead, I wanna still be able to call this. Then we're gonna have a shoot method here. If we press shoot, and you can just do control C on the line and then control V and it will copy. You can also do control shift D and it'll duplicate the whole line. So if we press shoot, call shoot, and we're not dead, right? Um, now, um, under physics process, we want to have our movement. So obviously we should not be able to move if we're dead. Um, right now it's getting move input from, uh, some predefined input stuff. This is for UI. I'm just going to put in my own input because it's, uh, more readable that way. Move right, move forwards, move backwards. There we go. Okay. So this just takes our input, converts it to a 2D vector, and then this line over here um, converts it to a 3D vector facing forward from our player. So if we rotate the player, it'll still work properly. Um, and then this just checks if that input is not zero. So if our, or yeah, if our direction input is not zero, then set our velocity of our character body 3D. So this, this node has a velocity built into it then uh, yeah, set the velocity to be that input times our speed. Um, otherwise, if we aren't pressing anything, set our velocity to be um, move toward the velocity to zero. Basically with this delta, so you can control click this method. See so move toward just, yeah, moves it from to by delta. So it'll just move it to zero. Then finally we call move and slide, which um, actually moves the character body based off whatever the velocity is. And if you hit something at an angle, it'll slide along it and move nicely. Okay, so now let's do um, function, or not function, we already have this defined, we're gonna do shoot. So what we're gonna do with this is if we cannot shoot, then return. 
and start off set can shoot to be false. So we're shooting. We want to wait for the animation to, to be finished. So we want to play the animation. So play shoot and then play the uh, shoot sound. Oh, wait, we already have that defined. Shoot sound dot play. There we go. And then uh, finally, we want to check our raycast. So if our raycast is colliding, so if it's hitting something and get the collider that it's hitting, so that and if it has a method called kill, we would just say get that method dot kill. There we go. So it'll call kill when we hit something. We also now we need a way we need to have a way to set this to be true. So we're just going to say function shoot animation done and we'll do can shoot equals true. And then so we need to call this. So we go up to uh, ready. So in here we want to get um, our animated sprite 2D and there is a signal on it called animation finish that is emitted whenever an animation is finished. If you click on something, you go to node signals and see all of the signals on it. You can also, of course, search in the docs here, animated sprite and see there are some signals here, right? Um, and it explains what they all do. So anyways, back to our script. So when this is finished, we just get that and we do dot connect and we put in the name of our method we want to connect to. So it'll call that when the animation finishes. Also in ready, we want to hide the mouse cursor, input dot mouse mode equals input dot mouse mode captured. So captured makes the cursor hidden and stuck to the center of the uh, screen. We also want to get our death, uh, our button here. So we can just drag this and it gives us the path and we just do dot um, button up. So that's a button up single connect and put in restart. There we go. So when we press that, it'll restart the game. Now, finally for restart, we're going to do get tree dot reload current scene and that'll restart it. And finally, we need our kill method. So if we die, we want to do dead equals true. We want to get a reference to the death screen. So if you want to get a reference to anything, you do a dollar sign, type in the name of it or whatever, and you can get the right, it'll give you the path here. And then that gives us a reference to it. So I just want to say show. So that makes it visible again. And let's set the mouse mode. I'll just copy that to be mouse mode visible. So it should be visible. So let's go ahead and bring this into the scene. So in our 3D scene here, I can either click this or I can do control shift A, drop in the player. Let's move you over here. Press F5. Let's bring it. And it looks good. It's shooting. I can move around. If I hit R, it restarts. If I hit escape, it closes. Let's quickly test that we can die though. So if I hit R, let's put a pound sign that common things out. Type in kill there instead. So when I hit restart, it should kill me. And I'm dead. I can't move. If I click restart, the scene restarts. There we go. Okay, so let's just control X, cut that line, put it back how it was. Now let's create our enemy. So new scene here, other node, let's do, you could also click 3D scene, right click, change type, and then change it to a character body. And then we type in enemy and save that and put on, we need a collision shape. Again, do a capsule shape, bring it up by one there and an animated sprite 3D. And let's do new sprite frames. Uh, click that. We want idle and this will be play on awake. Click this, go to monster sprites. Horizontal should be five, vertical should be two. Select all these ones, add those in. If we play that, we can see how it looks. Maybe make it a little faster and we want flags, billboard, Y billboard, so now it'll face us. If I hit one on the numpad, I can get the front orthogonal view, so let's just bring it up to there. Bring down the pixel size a little bit, maybe to like 0 0.009, so it fits in a little better. That looks good. Okay, now uh, set our collision, make sure we're on the characters layer and mass to environment and characters. Everything's good there. So now let's just make our death animation, so make a new one, call this death, get our frames five 
add that, play, and get our death animation, bring up the speed, here we go. Okay, cool. Okay, so now uh, one more thing is we wanna add in a sound. So let's do audio stream player 3D. So it will play spatially, right? So when we die, or when it dies, if it's really far away, it'll sound like it's really far away. And let's just bring on our monster die sound here. Put the bus to sound effects. And if we test this, let's call it death sound. And if I play this, it's you can hear it from pretty far away. Um, so if you wanna change that, I can change the unit size to like two. And you can see the circle that kind of shows the main area it plays in. If you zoom in, now it's pretty quiet from up close. You can also adjust the volume DB if you wanna make it just overall quieter or louder before the distance check is done. Um, so there, we got everything there. So let's add a script for that. Uh, I don't want anything in this template actually, so I'll just clear that. It's got a reference in this. Click, drag, hold, control, and drop it in. Uh, let's do export var move speed. In this case, we'll do 2.0. So doing export makes you can adjust it from the inspector here. So you can see it shows move speed over there. I can change that um, and then reset it also. I can also copy that. Let's do attack range as two also. And we want a reference to our player, so we'll do on ready player. Uh, character body 3d equals get tree get first node in group player so if you're familiar with unity this would be like get game object with tag or I forget what it's called bar dead equals false there we go so um, yeah when ready is called you get the player get the character body and there we go um, and we're doing typing here so we can specify that it's a character body 3d by putting a colon and putting that after. I could do that on other things like float or something, but I don't care, it's not that important. Um, so um, now we wanna do function physics process. So we'll do our movement. If we're dead, return, I don't care. If the player is null, return, I don't care. And let's get a direction to the player. So global position minus r, global position, and then we do direction.y equals zero, and then direction equals direction normalized. So basically, if the player's on the slope, we want to flatten the vector to get a horizontal movement vector before we move. Then we just do velocity equals direction times move speed, and do move and slide. And then we'll just always move in a straight line towards the player. We also want to have a kill method. So in this case, dead equals true. Uh, play the death sound, so we'll just get a reference to it. And uh, we're going to do animated sprite 3D dot play death and set uh, our collision shape to be disabled equals true. Alternatively, you could also do collision uh, layer equals zero and you might have to do mask also. Whatever. Um, so let's test that real quick. We go into world. Let's add in a enemy here. So run that, let's see, it's moving towards me. And if I shoot him, he dies, but it's looping. I forgot to turn off loop. Let's do this, turn off looping, there we go. All right, um, let's do that again. Shoot him, okay, stays dead. I don't collide with him once he's dead, good. Okay, now let's add in um, a new method. We'll call this function attempt to kill player and we'll get the distance to the player and if that equals uh, position distance to player dot global position if that is greater than attack range return don't do anything also let's put this in here oops there we go um, and then otherwise we want to get the eye line of us so vector three dot up this times 1.5 oh my god i got an indentation error okay i was wondering why i wasn't auto completing um then we want to get a query so we're going to do a raycast query so we do physics ray query parameters 3d we create that so anytime you're doing a raycast or some sort of physics cast so i could just use a raycast 3d like i did on the player but i also want to show here's how you do raycast from code or any other um, 
physics thing, basically. Um, you're going to use this. You can also, uh, if I just search uh, query, I think it'll show, yeah, you can do a shape, you can do a point, there's some other info in there. Anyway, so we're going to create this and we're going to create it from starting position will be our position plus the eye line. We don't want to start from our foot because there could be a little bump on the floor and then we won't, you know, represent if we're actually seeing the player and we want to go to player dot global position plus eye line and we're going to set the collision mass to be one. So uh, remember, one is the environment here. You can see value one there. And we just want to see if we have a line of sight to the player. That means we can hit the player. We already have a reference to the player, so we don't need that. Um, so and then we do the result. So we want to get the result of our query. So we do get the 3D world, get the space state of the world, call intersect ray with our query parameters. Then we just see, um, so if we go to this method, control click, it returns a dictionary with all this information in it, like what we collided with, the hit position, whatever. We don't care about that. We just want to see if we hit something. So we can just see if result dot is empty. That means we have clear line of sight to the player. So I'll just call player dot kill. There we go. Now let's go back to our world. We already have an enemy. So I'll just run that. It comes up to me. I die. Here we go. I can restart. Okay, so let's just add in some more enemies, kind of get the feel a little more. And you can see it's previewing with the uh, death animation because that's what I left it on. So if you want something that looks better, put it back on idle. And there we go, now you can see that. So let's run it and see how it is. And you can see I can't shoot through things. They're also just walking directly towards me. And there we go. Now, finally, if you want to full screen this, um, well, you can wait for someone to die. You can click this. It'll full screen, but you'll notice that the gun's really tiny and yeah, it looks weird and um, it doesn't start full screen. So you can go to project, project settings, search for window under display here. You can go to uh, mode full screen and then under stretch mode here, do canvas items. And now if I run it you'll see it is full screened and all the ui elements are the correct size finally if you like this tutorial be sure to check out my retro style 3d fps course on udemy it covers how to make a quake style 3d fps in godot game engine i'm currently in the process of updating it from godot 3 to godot 4 so there will be regular uploads of godot 4 content on this course and of course you can still watch the godot 3 videos too which are still pretty relevant to godot 4.